Hi there, this is Abhishek and in this video I will talk about the covariance and correlation and as per the definition both measures the strength of linear relationship between two variables. So here on the left hand side I have a couple of examples of linear relationship where in the first diagram you have a, an example or a chart of a positive linear relationship where when the x is increasing your y is also increasing and that shows a positive linear relationship. In the second example, when x is increasing, the y is decreasing. That shows that it both x and y has a negative linear relationship. And in the third example, it is a case of no relationship because uh, it is kind of a cyclical or it is going up and down and not clearly showing any kind of trend when x and y both are moving in their direction. So, so these are the three different cases uh, that you may find and there are a couple of others also like quadratic uh, one where you have a kind of a u kind of a shape or either on the upper side or on the down from the downside uh, which is kind of a, an extra a relationship which they call quadratic which is out of uh, this scope of this video so let's concentrate here on covariance and correlation so both are a measure of strength then which one to choose and to identify that, let's see what is the difference between a covariance and a correlation coefficient. So as per the definition, covariance lacks in showing the relative strength. That's the important word, relative, relative strength of the relationship. Whereas correlation coefficient helps us identifying the relative strength of linear relationship between the boundaries of minus 1 to plus 1. And that's a major difference uh, in a layman language if you would say that uh, Correlation coefficient has a boundaries of minus 1 to plus 1 where minus 1 represents negative linear relationship and positive 1 uh, shows the perfect positive linear relationship and uh, if the values of values are lying between minus 1 and plus 1 then we can identify whether there is a negative or a positive uh, relationship between the two variables. So in case of a covariance you don't have any boundary and you may get a result like uh, let's say you are trying to find a relationship between the spending that you are doing and then out of that sales that you are trying to generate and a value may be somewhere let's say 850 now what this 850 represents is it good bad or what it is so that's why it lacks in showing the relative strength relative to the variables that you have and in case of correlation coefficient, the values will be always between minus 1 and positive 1. Then you can always relate it back to if it is near to positive 1, then it is a positive relationship. Let's say if you get a correlation coefficient of 0.93, then you can say yes, if you are doing a more spending, then your sales are increasing. Or if it is, let's say, uh, minus 0.9, then uh, you are doing a spending but there is a negative impact on that so you accordingly go in that uh, analysis and that direction that okay uh, this thing is not making a significant impact let's stop it or let's take a corrective actions so that's how a uh, correlation coefficient is useful and we usually don't use covariance uh, in a practical scenarios so here i have a quick example of uh, indices data we have two indices s and p and nasdaq where i have uh, their their information by dates so on 1st of December what was where was the indice uh, in both cases and that's what it has been shown so if you see on 1st of December it was 1230 S&P was at 1230 and Nasdaq was two, uh, 200, 2612 on 2nd of December it was 1244 and Nasdaq was 2626 in 5th of December it was 1257 and NASDAQ was 2655. So if we just look at this data, we will clearly identify that as the dates are moving, both S&P and NASDAQ are moving in the same direction. If S&P is increasing, NASDAQ is also increasing. So this shows a perfect case of a positive linear relationship. But that's not the usual case in practical scenario. You may get a lot of lot of data let's say 100 observation or 1000 observation then in that case you won't be easily identify whether there is a perfect positive relationship or not and in that case you need some sort of a measure so in, so to identify that 
we calculate the correlation coefficient. So in this case, let's see how much positively correlated the values are. So if we right click on this blank area, go to new sheet object, and let's say I choose a text object because it will going to give me just a single value between the two variables. So I would say is equal to to get the formulas, and I would say corral. Corral is basically uh, your function to identify or to get the correlation coefficient and then I need to specify the value 1 and value 2. So these are the two values between we want to identify a relationship. So the first one is SNP 500 and I would put a comma and say NASDAQ and just close the bracket. For now I'll just click OK and here is a, here is the result. 0.93 or 93.9 percent if we round it off so how we can round it off we just right click on this go to properties and uh, yeah so in this case we need to write a function which is num or num hash and then do a round off so i'm leaving it up to you i have shown it in my previous videos how to do that but if you convert it into a percentage that will be somewhere around 93 percent or if we just take a direct value then it is very close to plus one so that shows that there is a very strong relationship between s and p and nasdaq so based on the values that you are getting uh, you can see whether there is a positive or negative relationship if the value is close to zero let's say if the result was 0 0.0387 then we could say that there was not at all any relationship between the s and p and nasdaq or if the value would be minus 0.9387 then we would have said that uh, there is a negative relationship that means if s and p is increasing then nasdaq is decreasing or if nasdaq is increasing then s and p is decreasing so both are going in two different direction so that's how you can identify uh, the core with the help of correlation coefficient whether there is any positive negative or no re linear relationship between the two variables that's pretty much all I wanted to discuss in this video and I'll meet you in the new video, the new topic.